good afternoon guys good afternoon I'm looking at the wrong place here the Holy Spirit has led me to come and to provide my testimony I have provided um, a very similar um, message months and months ago but it was not a full testimony on exactly how this got started um, every experience that I've experienced and sharing with you guys what exactly is attached to the enemy. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time, on this day, in this hour. We ask that the Holy Spirit will guide and lead everything that is needed to be said and it will be easily received it will be easily discerned in the mighty name of Jesus you will allow the words that are spoken to penetrate the hearts and the minds of those who know that they need some form of explanation some form of discernment of what is of you and what is of the enemy I pray that whoever receives this, whoever sees this, whoever shares this, that they will know that you, Holy Spirit, are behind this word and they will feel a conviction in order to receive what is being spoken and repent and walk away. Not just walk away, Holy Spirit, but to walk towards you, Jesus and live a new life of righteousness, a new life that is pleasing to you, a new life that will give them eternal life with you in Jesus name, amen. All right, guys, so where do I start? <laughs> I will say this, I have always been a person that had a spirit of wanting to kind of do my own thing. I was never that person that wanted to learn things from my parents. My parents would always say no, and I would always say, this is why I can or why I should. So because of that, and I feel like God gives us a certain spirit that intentionally, that will take us down a certain path that is needed in order for our purpose to be, um, in order for us to actually live out our purpose, there are certain experiences that we have to go through. There are certain situations that have to happen, even things that don't seem so great. And once we realize that, and once we get out of the mindset of asking God why, and understanding that we are placed here to be an example for him, to be a living vessel for him, then we will know that it is it was all worth it, no matter what experience we went through. Okay, so I started out in a Christian household. My mother always took us to church. I always had what I thought was a relationship with God, but it wasn't. It was not a relationship with God. It was, I felt a closeness with him. I felt a closeness with knowing that he was there and with me, but I still lived a life of sin. I still did not open my Bible. And because I did not open my Bible was the reason why um, the enemy was able to persuade me with all of the things that are being presented in this present time in order to deceive, I was unaware that the enemy could directly influence like he influenced me. And um, that is what caused me to kind of go down a rabbit hole of falsehood, of destruction, and it all started from something as simple as looking up my horoscope. We all have grown up kind of
kind of feeling like, okay, when's your birthday? You're a this, you're a Capricorn, you're a Scorpio, you know, and feeling like it was just very, very innocent and there was nothing really attached to it. Never really knowing what it all associated with. So um, just to give a little bit of back story, um, I've had some miraculous things happen to me and just thought that it was just some miraculous things that happened. Um, I've been struck by lightning. The lightning hit my mother's house and I was in the kitchen. I had my hands on the sink and my children at the time were three. The twins were three and it was their birthday. And my oldest son, I think he might have been five. And I'm at the sink. The lightning, the lightning hits her house and it obviously hit the house like really right next to the window because I saw this immense, oh my God, this the brightest light I've ever seen. And it hit, as it hit the house and my hand is on the sink, the current went through the sink and knocked me to the floor. Because of that, um, you know, I looked at it like it was just, okay, this happened. I cried, my kids were crying. We were like, we had no clue what was going on. I didn't even go to the hospital. My arm was a little numb. So um, before, and even before this, before the twins were born, when my, my uh, now 17, almost 18 year old was a baby, I was in the bed with my husband. He was asleep and I'm laying on my back and I just happened to um, wake up and look up. And there was a transparent um, angel that was hovering over the bed. Almost like, imagine if I'm laying down and it's laying down on top of me, but right above me, I was able to see the lines in the wings. I was able to see that it was fluttering, fluttering so fast, um, something that you really can't even explain, but it was transparent. I could see through it, but I could see the wings and it was huge. And as I tried to wake up my husband to tell him, it faded away. So it was, from, it was meant for me to see. So those are a few things that have happened to me, um, you know, prior to me getting to where I am right now. And just, you know, thinking that, okay, that was God letting me know that he was with me. But as I go into um, more present time, and I've experienced some other things like domestic violence, um, I've had some rough things happen to me. And that's why I explained in the beginning that it has to do with pruning us. And it also has to do with tests that God has to take us through. And if we don't learn through tests that he sends us, then he'll send that test through multiple different situations and circumstances. And sometimes if we're disobedient, the wages of sin is death, unfortunately. And um, if we don't get it, then we can become a casualty. I'm just grateful that I woke up. So getting into more of the present moment, in 2018, the end of 2018, was when I decided to just look up my horoscope one afternoon. And um, I know it was the enemy, but the enemy told me I could just, you know, feel it within my spirit, just say, why don't you just go and look it up? on YouTube and see if there's someone talking about it in more detail rather than um, rather than reading it. And so I did. And what I did is when I realized that it was actually being created through tarot readings. I don't think very many people know that your horoscopes are created through a tarot reading. 
why I did not see that and then as a Christian know to say, oh my God, and walk away? I don't know. It's that curious spirit that was within me that just caused me to just get drawn further and further in. And so um, I started watching the tarot readings all the time. Um, those tarot readings and getting pulled into more of the metaphysical lifestyle and the world of the metaphysical. It led me more so into astrology and moon cycles. And um, I started to, I actually then went into a relationship that I should not have gotten into that was what they would consider to be a twin flame relationship. And a twin flame is something that's very similar to what you would consider to be a soulmate, but it is a soulmate that the enemy has put together for you. It's a plan of the enemy in order to keep you completely off the track of God. And that will end in hurt. And it will have your heart so hurt that it will leave your heart open for the enemy. And that's the reason that the Bible tells you to guard your heart, okay? Guarding your heart means that you have to pay close attention to what you allow to get too close to you. And um, what you believe, what you take into your spirit. And it, that's exactly what happened. It led to disaster, it led to destruction, it led to hurt. And from that, I went into the practices even more heavier. It began to open me up to things. I So I wrote down some things here of my experiences and the things that started happening to me. Um, basically, my experiences started with me receiving um, or seeing numbers, seeing repeated double numbers, okay? I immediately felt like that was some type of connection um, to God and that God was trying to communicate something to me. After the numbers um, continued, I started to have ringing in my ear, my right ear. It would come and go, come and go, and to the point where it wouldn't stop and it would just continue to ring. Um, then I started having more supernatural experiences. Um, I was having the urge to go and get my own tarot cards and start reading tarot for myself, which I did. That led me to then go and start getting sage and burning incense. And um, I was full blown going into that earthly metaphysical lifestyle. And um, I thought it was God because it was signs and wonders that were happening to me. I experienced um, my foot heating up off and on. And every time I looked something up online, it always said that it was related to your spiritual awakening. Or it would say something about angel numbers. And um, I didn't know that all of this was a deception. All of it was what was leading me further and further in. Because I have, I'm one of those people where when it's something that I get into, something I recognize, I will start it and then I will go full force. It doesn't matter if it's a business. It doesn't matter if it's a belief. I am a self-starter. I am 100% dedicated to something once I believe in it. And I research and I just go full force. And that's exactly what I did. And they knew that I would. So I started having telepathic um, communication from what I thought was my angels. They would telepathically speak to me in my head when I was sleeping. And um, they told me that I would be an energy healer. I did not know what that was, but once I got up and read about what an energy healer was, I thought for surely it must be God because the enemy isn't going to tell me I need to heal people's energy. Not understanding 
all the details about energy and why I need to stay away from all of this mindset as a whole. And I'll explain that to you as well. I also started having clairaudient or clairsentient or all of these clair experiences, which is basically psychic activity. Anything that is related to psychics is demonic. It is of the enemy. It is not of God. Um, it is connected in receiving message, messages from familiar spirits that are assigned to you from the enemy in order to keep you derailed and off track from God. So that's why they know about you. That's why they know um, things that you would think the psychic shouldn't know about. So you think that she's real or that she's telling you the truth. Those familiar spirits is, as, is exactly who is communicating and using her as a channel to give you messages that are similar to the truth, but is a lie. I then also began to be drawn to people who were doing the same practices and doing the same thing to validate the falsehood and to make me feel like you know, we were a part of this elite group of some sort. Um, I started to feel my third eye opening. I was not trying for any of this to happen, but because I was tapping into these things, because I was opening myself to these things, um, they began to communicate with me and cause my energy and cause my centers of my body to open. Um, I was opening demonic portals and did not know it. Through the tarot, through the sage, through the crystals, um, all of it was working together in order to give them access to me. I began to see orbs. I began to see static figures and things moving. It's very obvious that the moment that I did this, these things, that the covering of God was somewhat removed from me. It wasn't completely removed because God completely snatched me out of this, but he removed himself in order for the enemy to have a form of access to me. Um, real life witches. When I say real life witches, I mean people who have been practicing witchcraft their entire life could now see me. It was almost as if I became visible. Um, that they knew that I was a target that the enemy should destroy. Almost as if they knew that the enemy was letting them know that if for any reason that I got from up under their thumb that I would be a threat. And that I am right now. And he hates it. So, um, <laughs> I had experiences where I would go out in public. And twice there were Spanish women. They saw me. They stopped in their tracks. They gave me this piercing look. When I tell you I would look at them, I would shrug my shoulders, ask like, okay, what are you looking at? They would not move because if they were to break their concentration, they would not have been able to complete the curse that they were trying to put on me. And it was called the evil eye. You can look it up. The evil eye is very real. Um, I had two women try to do this to me and I've never seen anything like this in my life. And I'm thinking to myself, why all of a sudden are these people able to see me? Why all of a sudden is this happening? And it became apparent to me because I was no longer covered by Jesus. I was no longer covered because I was practicing these things, because I opened the door to the enemy. He took his hand off of me. The Holy Spirit does not communicate with you or attach itself to anything that is ungodly. Tarot, anything related to uh, mysticism, um, astrology, numbers, uh, or numerology, witchcraft, any of those things, it's not about your intent. It is not about your intent. The Bible speaks so heavily, so heavily about 
anything that is related to witchcraft, pagan religion, um, practices, um, sorcery, divination, the occult, they are all connected. I never knew that. I just thought that tarot cards, it talked about not doing and not going to psychics. I didn't dive into the, you know, depths of the Bible to try and see why and, and, and what it really said. I thought, again, I could use any tool I wanted to in order to communicate with God as long as I believed that Jesus died on the cross and that um, I believed in God and I wasn't doing it for the sake of harming anyone, that it would be okay. Boy, was I wrong, okay? Let me make sure I've shared everything. So what the enemy teaches you is self-love, light, and about energy, frequency, and enlightenment, and the universe. All of these things are deception, all of it. Um, the enemy makes you feel that the signs and wonders um, are God, and that because they are supernatural experiences, and that you are feeling connected to the universe and to these supernatural experiences, that it's God the one true God. There are multiple gods that are connected to the enemy. The one true God that's gonna keep you out of hell is not connected to these things. These practices make you feel powerful. They make you feel important without needing the presence of Jesus or the Holy Spirit because they make you feel like you are the one that is in control of what happens to you? You are in control of where you go when you leave this, this, this world or what you create in your world. Falsehood. It's all falsehood. You will begin to feel that your spirit may be led by the wrong spiritual influence. Um, you may not recognize it, but your spirit is then beginning to be led by something that is not of God. The enemy will give your spirit the urge to do more and more things that lead you away from Christ. The enemy will lead you to believe, like I just said, it's about your intent. I'm sorry, I'm just going over my notes, make sure I'm not um, forgetting anything. So to go back into my story, once I began to have these experiences, um, I was on cloud nine. My parents went and um, bought me a Reiki table because once I realized that Reiki was what was related to um, energy healing, I immediately, I just took it and ran with it, okay? Like I said before, I found someone to get me certified. I went and got certified in Reiki 1 and Reiki 2. I even had plans of going to Japan and getting, um, becoming certified as a master Reiki healer. I can't believe that I allowed myself to get certified in Reiki 1 and 2 without recognizing that this was not of God. Um, because basically, a part of you becoming certified is allowing someone else who is a master, who has received the spirit of um, um, Yasui Sensei, which is the person who created Reiki many, many years ago, who was influenced by the devil. He received the spirit of the enemy and year after year after year, they pass the spirit on to the next person and the next person who becomes um, a Reiki practitioner. And so it has reached, once it reached the United States, it began to grow more and more and more. And, um, she began to basically do a ritual over me. She's drawing the Japanese symbols over my head, in my hand, blowing in my hand. Um, and you're sitting there with your eyes closed. You have no idea what the person is doing. And she's placing and channeling that spirit for it to come and dwell within you. Um, one thing that the enemy does it emulates or it tries to, um, it tries to be 
it tries to conform or it tries to disguise as light. And so anything that the Holy Spirit or that Jesus is, the enemy tries to copy that because it's not a creator. So just like the true Holy Spirit connected to Jesus lives within us, that spirit uh, connected with Reiki tries tried to basically live within you in order for um, it to help to open the energy centers in people so that it allows the supernatural connected to the demonic to have access to you the same way that the Holy Spirit allows you to have access to Jesus. I never knew or understood what and how this was all connected. And I promise you that it's the Holy Spirit that's given me this um, explanation even now. When performing Reiki, I used to um, go into prayer and ask for the, I don't even, you, you're asking for the spirits, your spiritual team to come in and assist you with healing. And immediately when you do that was when my hands would begin healing up and then literally I would perform Reiki on these people without even touching them and my hands would heat up. They would feel the heat on their bodies without me even touching them. And you're literally calling on Japanese demons and you're going over the centers, which are the somewhat what you you know what you would call the chakra centers of the body and you're opening up their chakras you're opening up the centers that allow the enemy and that allow the spiritual world to have access to your body to your mind to your spirit and i thank god that it was only a matter of maybe a month that I had been certified that God actually sent someone to bring revelation to me. I was even sharing my spiritual journey on YouTube, unaware that I was about to influence all of these people with falsehood, which would have allowed me to have such a horrible experience had I passed away or died without realizing that I was connected to the devil. I would have been in hell. I would have been in hell. So I am more than grateful to God that I was able to come out of that. And that's why my channel is now dedicated to um, the Lord. And I'm now receiving prophetic word from God the same way that I thought that I was receiving it before, it is now coming directly from the word of God and through the Bible and backed up by scripture. So I don't want to go too far without, you know, telling you guys the story. I'm going too far. Let me slow down. Okay. Um, Cause I want to tell you how I know that these things were connected to the devil and my experiences. It's about to get real. Okay. Um, I'm already at 29 minutes. I'm going to try and get through this in 10 minutes. Okay guys. But however long this takes, if you're watching this, you're watching this because God wanted you to watch this. God sent this to you. He wanted you to know the truth and he wanted you to know what's attached to the things that you're dealing with. So God sent someone who knew the word enough to quote scripture and convict me. She began to harass my videos on YouTube. I mean, harass every video that I had put up, condemning everything that I was saying and saying that it was connected to the enemy and saying that it was not of God. I was offended at the beginning, but then it began to bother my spirit. I began to go into prayer and ask God, okay, God, surely I have not experienced all these things in vain. Surely these things that I'm experiencing are of you and not of the enemy. 
I said, if it is of the enemy, please let me know. I cannot tell you exactly how he showed me or what he showed me. But I began to realize in my spirit that it was not of God and that I had been deceived. God will have to bring it back to my to my mind about what it was and how I came to that realization. But my spirit just knew, oh my God, that's the first thing I thought, oh my God, what have I done? I began to throw everything out. When I say everything, I threw everything out. Um, I had to search my house and I didn't even realize that I had accumulated so many things within a, I would say only a six month period that I had been doing this stuff. I first threw out the tarot cards. Um, I had even purchased a pendulum. I threw that out. I threw away all of the books. I ripped up my Reiki certifications. I got rid of everything. I threw away clothing that had anything to do with um, any of this stuff that was not, if it did not glorify God, I threw it away. I was making the most beautiful um, bracelets that were natural stone bracelets. I had spent so much money, hundreds of dollars. Like I told you, I go after it when I realize there's something I'm good at or that I should be doing. And um, I threw out everything, all of the stones, all of the bracelets that had already been made. Um, the Holy Spirit basically told me that anything that was related to that, if I had that belief or if I was practicing anything and I was dealing with those things, that I could be passing that on to someone else. So I threw out everything, the sage, the incense, everything, okay? The moment that... I threw the things out was the moment that the worst time of my life began. It was like the enemy, um, what I thought was my angels, was now showing themselves and was angry. When I say they were angry, they were angry that I had realized the truth. They were so angry that I had turned my back on what they believed and that I was now going to be a vessel of God. I began receiving attacks every single night. The things that you see that happen in horror movies is exactly the things that begin to happen to me on a daily basis. I experienced sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is what scientists or medical professionals, you know, medical professionals always want to put a label on something because they don't want to believe in the supernatural. They don't want to believe in anything that's spiritual. But trust me, sleep paralysis is spiritual. It is not anything that, and that's the reason they call it sleep paralysis because they can't really explain it. Um, the enemy would attack me in my sleep. I mean, the most fear that you've ever felt in your life, it was like the devil sat on top of me. I could feel the radiate, I could feel the fear of, of it radiating upon me as if the, the the worst thing had touched me and laid upon me. I could not open my eyes. I could not move. All I could do was just scream Jesus's name over and over again. So it started with that. Then it got to the point where I started experiencing um, it not wanting me to sleep. 
I have been punched in my chest, literally punched in my chest on a night that um, I fell asleep without sleeping with my spiritual music playing. I had to, in order to sleep, I had to sleep with Psalms 91 playing. I had to sleep with um, worship music playing the entire night. If for any reason it went off or it stopped playing, which on this particular night, I had forgotten to turn it on. I was punched, literally the wind knocked out of me. This is something that I, I, I swear to you, I would never lie to anyone about anything like this. I never even knew this stuff existed. I never knew that the enemy was this real. I couldn't even use the restroom with my door closed. This was how fearful I was. I could not come home alone because I had been attacked in my home where my clothes had been pulled. And I felt the spirit rush up on me, a cold wind rush up on me and grab almost kind of like, not physically grab me, but it wrapped itself around me to where I felt that energy of fear that was a fear that you can't even explain. I have fallen asleep holding my cross and woken up to a spirit of a woman digging her nails into my hands I could not move. I could not speak. All I could do in my spirit was scream the name of Jesus. I had to scream it at least seven or eight times. And I had to say the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and it released me. I woke up. I turned on my TV. Um, I turned on my light. I got my Bible. I immediately started reading and praying. I knew that it had not left my room. But when it saw that I was not going to stop, and that I was not going to go back to sleep. And that I was going to keep praising God. I could tell it was angry. It turned into a ball of light. And it flew past me out of my room. And as it passed me. The fear that my body trembled uncontrollably. It was a fear that had my entire body tremble uncontrollably. This is not something that you guys want to play with. Can you imagine something like this having access to you for eternity? These are the things, these are the entities that are attached to these practices. It took me months, months of sleepless nights of me staying awake for 24 hours because they would not let me sleep before God delivered me, before two angels, two deliverance women, they were deliverance ministers that helped me understand the power that I possessed through the name of Jesus and through the Holy Spirit and through praying in the spirit and praying in tongues. That very night after speaking with them, I can't even explain the power that came over me. But I took control and they only were able to come upon me if I allowed them through fear because they feed off of your fear. They feed off of you not knowing who you are in Christ. The moment that I realized who I was in Christ, they could not touch me and I do not fear the devil. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I fear the one who could send me and have my soul be eternal in hell. And that is fearing God. So here are some things or some, um, here are some things that are attached to these practices and that are attached to these spirits and these demonic forces. 
Now, what I want you to understand is there are multiple, multiple, multiple spirits, multiple spirits that are attached to the kingdom of the enemy. Multiple. Oh my gosh, there's multiple. Okay. There's water spirits. There is uh, demons of the air. There's all sorts of demons. Okay. And they all are attached in a part of the enemy. So here are some things of this world that a lot of new age people, which is also not of God, um, is attached to these things and that can draw you out of the will of God. Sage, crystals, incense, believing in angel numbers, auras, pendulums, tarot cards, yoga, mystical dance, sacred sound, chakras, opening your third eye, metaphysical items like herbs, stones, uh, Wiccans or people that pra practice Wicca, witches and magic, meditation, ancestral channeling and talking to the dead, the flower of life, terms like namaste, all of these things are all related and connected to the enemy. Like I said in the beginning of this video, the enemy wants you to think that all you need to do is be a loving, nice person, that you need to have self-love, um, that you need to be love and light, and that your energy frequency and your enlightenment is what you need to focus on, and that, you're, that you need to pay homage to the universe and not Jesus. These are all deception from the enemy. So I am coming to you guys humbly as a person who has experienced this, as a person who has practiced this falsehood. And the moment that I turned my back and I went to Jesus, they tried to kill me. Ever since all of this stuff has happened, and I've been delivered, I have been 100% for Jesus. Allow my experience to be enough. Allow my experience to be enough. If you are practicing these things, throw them out, Re repent, go into repentance, asking God to forgive you and never going back to them. The Bible says that the moment you are saved and restored and you are uh, brought out from under these demonic forces, if you go back to them, then the devil comes back with an influence and with demonic forces that are seven times more evil than the first. And I'm paraphrasing, but that is what it says. So basically, if I was to be forgiven and have come out of those, those practices and that mindset, and I decided to go back, it would be over for me. The attacks from the enemy would be beyond my mindset. So I am trying my best to save you from having to go through what I went through. And if you have to go through what I went through because you're already practicing these things, I think that it's best that you go through that to get away from it and know what you're attached to than to be blind or rebellious or selfish and die without repentance. I don't even wanna think about that for you. So I'm not even going to go any further with that. But um, guys, so here's another thing, believing in uh, being an empath, that's all attached to the enemy as well. Um, soul tribes, twin flames, believing that you're a goddess, or believing that you are a God.
All I want you to know is that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves you. And if you're watching this video, then either yourself or someone you know needed to hear this story. And Jesus wants you to come to him. He wants you to be in repentance. He wants you to give your life to him so he can show you what real love is. Okay, guys, I've never desired to be in God's presence every hour of the day as much as I do now. And to know that he speaks to me the same way that the enemy used to speak to me through tarot. He now speaks that to me through the Bible. And he gives me prophetic word and prophetic um, dreams. And I know that they are from God because that's all I fill myself with is God. That's all I get my influence from is the word of God. So guys, I am already at 47 minutes and so be it. This had to be said, it had to be done. I wanted to tell my story and I hope that it has been received by who it needed to be received from. I am being obedient by sharing this word to bring knowledge to those who are practicing witchcraft, who are practicing sorcery. And even if you think that it is white magic, and it's not for the sake of harming anyone. It's still punishable by God. It's still not of God. It is still attached to Satan. It is not about our intent. I will put in the description box a link to the video that shows many, many scripture of where in the Bible it says and what it says um, about the occult, divination, new age, um, sorcery, witchcraft. I have laid it out. So if you need scripture on what it says, the description box will have it for you. If you have any questions, I am more than happy to have a discussion with you by email. Um, if you don't want, if you want to be private and you don't want to place any questions in the description or in the comment box, my email is in the description. You can email me. I will respond. I will give you um, insight. There are several different things that I had to do in order to stop the attacks and in order to, um, to get into right standing with God. So I'm going to end there, guys. I thank you so much for watching. I thank you so much for tuning in. And I pray that you guys are um, blessed. And I pray that this message blessed someone. And I just thank God. I thank God for him using me. In Jesus' name. All right, guys. Have a blessed one. I love you.